Have you ever tried to paint with watercolor only to find that the paper would buckle when it gets wet and then all your paint just sinks into these valleys and doesn't really lay out evenly? Well, there's a solution for that. We can stretch our watercolor paper um, in a few different methods. You could just take your paper and tape it to your board and hope for the best but you're still going to have some buckling taking place. And the reason why that happens is because when you paint and get the top layer of your paper wet, the underside of the paper is still dry and that creates some issues as the paper expands and contracts because it's only doing it really on one side. And that's what creates these buckling and like wavy parts of your paper that get really annoying when you're trying to work with them. So. Stretching your paper adequately involves soaking your paper. So we need to get it wet all the way through the paper and then we're going to adhere it to our surface. As it dries, the paper is going to shrink and then it's going to stay nice and flat and nice and tight across the surface. Uh, that is going to prevent any sort of bumps and ripples and buckles in your paper. So we primarily want to soak and stretch our paper if we're using a thinner watercolor paper. So this is super duper student grade watercolor paper. It's 90 pounds. So this is like regular drawing paper basically. This is going to buckle immediately if you get it wet. So we definitely need to stretch paper like this. Another type of paper that we're going to play around with soaking is 140 pound watercolor paper. So it's a little sturdier, but it's still going to buckle if you work really wet on it, so lots of water. And I'm going to show you a couple different methods of stretching our paper. So we could stretch our paper with this gummed paper tape. So this is kind of like your shipping or packing tape that you get on boxes when you get packages in the mail. And another method is stapling the paper to a board. Now I have two different surfaces that we're going to work with as well. Um, this is a really fancy surface. It's called gator board. And it's basically a foam board that has kind of a waterproofed surface on it. It's really expensive. I think this board itself was like $40. So it's not something you just casually buy, I guess. Um, otherwise, my other surface that I have to work on is just a piece of MDF. So really cheap drawing surface. You're going to want to make sure that your surface is um, sturdy enough that it's not going to bend and warp with the wetness of the paper. So it needs to be able to hold up to the abuse you're about to put it through. So are you ready for a field trip? We're going to go soak our paper. So if you have a large Tupperware container, uh, you could fill that with water. Unfortunately, I don't have one here, so I'm just gonna use my bathtub. And basically you want to fill your container with cool water. You don't want it to be hot or anything. And we're just going to slide our paper into the water so that it's completely submerged. And we're just gonna let it soak in the water for a little bit. So depending on the thickness of the paper, it will need to soak a little bit longer. So the really thin paper, that 90 pound paper, will only need to soak for a minute or two. The 140 pound paper might need a little bit longer. Um, one thing you want to be really aware of when you are soaking your paper is um, you wanna make sure your hands are clean. Because if you have any oils on your fingers, they're really going to come off on the paper during this stage. So we're just going to let this sit here for a little bit and soak up the water and then we'll move on to our next step. So we've let our paper soak for a couple of minutes now and you'll know that it's ready when it's nice and flimsy. So I'm gonna take it out of the water and just kinda shake off as much of the excess water as I can. It was nice in college, I had a big squeegee I could use, but now I just have to use my hands. And I'm just gonna place it on my drawing surface and just kind of wipe off some of that extra water. 
And then this one, I am just going to set on the paper and I'm going to move it to the gator board when I'm all done. So we'll just get some of that extra water off and we'll head back to the studio. So now that we're back in the studio, I have pre-cut some of my gummed paper tape. This is water activated tape, so we have to get it wet for it to get sticky. Um, and I'm about to start putting it onto my paper here. The main thing we want to make sure our paper is still staying damp. You don't want to let it get dry too fast, otherwise it's going to buckle. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to get it wet, and then I'm just going to brush across my tape here. It's a little awkward when it's super curly. If you have a sponge, you could rub the tape across the sponge to do this too. I find that much easier, but unfortunately I don't have a big enough sponge here. So I'm just going to make sure that my tape is fully moistened. Um, you don't want it too wet, otherwise you're going to take all of the adhesive off of the page, but I'm going to just try and lay it down evenly across the paper. I'm going to cover it by about a quarter of an inch or so and press it down really tightly onto the board. We want to rub it down, make sure the edges are fully adhered. If you want to make sure that your taping is really precise, you could draw a really light border around your paper so you know where to put the tape. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, but if you're unsure of your ability to do that, that's always a good suggestion. All right, now we always want to move across from one another. So I'm going to just smooth my paper out and make sure it's really nice and flat. And then I'm going to lay my other piece of tape down. And then we're going to move to the opposite sides. We want to really work the edges down, make sure there aren't any gaps or bubbles or anything. Because if the tape comes off, then it is not a very good stretch and you're probably going to have some buckling happening. All right, so our paper is fully stretched now. Um, basically at this point, all we have to do is let it dry. It's going to take, I'd say wait a day before you use it because you want to make sure it's completely dry before you start working on it because as the paper dries, it's going to shrink and it's going to pull it really nice and tight. So let's move on to the stapling method. So the stapling method is very similar to stretching a canvas. Um, so generally when we staple, we're going to want to start in one side and then move to the opposite side and constantly be kind of pulling the paper across. That's going to prevent bubbles. So what I'm going to do is open my stapler up and then probably about a quarter to an eighth of an inch across, I'm going to lay my staples down. So I'm going to start across and then kind of make almost like a plus sign here. And then I'm just going to slowly build my way out. And I'm always kind of pulling the paper across as I do this to get rid of any bubbles. I'm keeping my staples about a quarter to half an inch apart from one another. They don't need to be like right next to each other, but you don't want them too far apart either. All right, so I've stapled all the way around my paper. And again, as it dries, it's going to shrink. If you want, when it's fully dry, you could take some painter's tape or artist tape and you can tape over the staples to give it a really nice clean edge when you are painting. Um, then all you have to do when you're finished with your painting is you're going to peel this off of the board and then laboriously take all the staples out of it. With the uh, gummed paper tape, when you need to take it off of the board, you're going to have to use an X-Acto knife and a ruler probably, and then cut it off of the board. 
So this stuff does not like to come off of anything. So it's a little more time consuming to get it off of the board. But after everything is dry, you're ready to paint and you should have a nice flat, tight surface to work on with your watercolor. So there you have it, stretching watercolor in a few different ways. Thanks for watching and keep creating. <laughs> hey, Doodle. How's it, buddy? <laughs> you look very disheveled. <laughs>